Well, it's June 2014, and this year, Kathy and I will have been married for 40 years. So to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary, we've come here to Miami, Florida. We're going on a two-week cruise to the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, on the Carnival Glory, your fun ship, they call it. And uh, what a wonderful way to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. This has got to be one of the best views of a city you'll ever see. It's just beautiful. Look at that, will you? Fantastic. What do you reckon about uh, Miami, Florida? Well, you get a different perspective from up here. It's stunning. Just gorgeous. So we say farewell to Miami as we head for the Caribbean. Over there's Miami Beach. Pretty impressive departure views, aren't they? And the farewell party's underway already. And down there is Miami Beach. There's lots of people enjoying a late afternoon swim. We thought you might like to know what it's like on the Carnival Glory, so we'll give you a wee tour and show you what's happening here. This is our cabin, very nice spacious cabin, the nice porthole, and every day we get one of these, and this time it's a stingray. There's a nice spacious couch, it's a pretty big room really. The TV and a nice big bathroom as well and shower. All very comfortable. And every day you get a fun times because this is the fun cruise and it tells you all the fun things you can do, major events, uh, shows and all the, the little things that are going on. All the restaurants you can eat 24 hours a day should you wish. Um, some of the restaurants actually close but you can always get pizza and turkey sandwiches 24-7 and tea and coffee. Um, some of the uh, important seminars are about the Caribbean or um, you want to know about more cruises or you might want to buy a piece of art at the art auction. And, um, or a little seminar with Dr. Rubin about luscious slips and um, anything else you want to do. Just fantastic. Never get bored. And now welcome to the island of Cozumel, Mexico. Cozumel is just a small island on the northern um, side of Mexico in the west of the Caribbean. The original inhabitants of the Caribbean were the Carib people who came up from South America. And then between AD 200 and AD 900, there were the Mayans, and they established a civilization in, uh, in this area. And especially here, in Cozumel, we're at the San Gervasio um, ruins, and this is where everyone who was a Mayan used to try and come 
to have a pilgrimage once in their lifetime. The Mayan people were very educated and um, they thought that the number seven was perfect, so you'll see seven steps. Whenever you see a lot of steps, they made uh, human and animal sacrifices over there. Um, and they created the Mayan calendar, which actually is not unlike our calendar ultimately, and it's very accurate. And it's the one that they reckoned was the end of the world a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it started again apparently. Here we have a Mayan house. The Mayan people are quite small with oriental features because their origins were in Mongolia. They were called Indians, wrongly, because Indian means don't have any religion. Everything's made out of coral because uh, Cozumal is a coral island. And here we have a temple for their fertility goddess, the goddess of the moon, Ikshal. This is one of their temples. And it's great all these uh, years later that they're still preserved. And then when the Europeans came, they tended to kill off the Mayan men so they could uh, take the Mayan women. And of course they brought lots of diseases which led to the downfall of the whole Mayan civilization. But the mixture of Mayan and European and all other kind of cultures led to, led to what's called Mexico, Mexican. And so that's the culture that we have in Mexico today. Mexico, Mexican means mixed, mixed races. And here we have the Caribbean Sea or the Caribbean Sea. Apparently the locals call it Caribbean and posh people call it Caribbean. Gradually it's changing to being called Caribbean. And it's noted for its fantastic colors. Look at that. There's a very large coral reef out there and apparently it is the second largest in the world next to the Australian Great Barrier Reef and the sand that we're standing on is actually pretty much all coral and um, it would have been washed up from the sea. It's a beautiful place this Cosmol but a much much smaller than I expected it to be. It's just a little island. And now welcome to Belize. Belize was the former British Honduras and it's a country of about 300 kilometers long made up of 200 islands. They're all keys and so we're going to come here to explore some more Mayan ruins and they reckon we'll have an unbelievable time. The roads in Belize are just appalling <laughs> and it's a long way to Elton R <laughs> and the question is whether we'll live. <laughs> Boy, these have to be the worst roads in the world. It's incredible to uh, go on the main highway, which is one lane of absolutely rubbish road, and just get thrown around. It's incredible. But we made it here to Alton Hart, so should be good, I hope, I hope so. The Spanish came here in the 1500s and then in the 1600s the British came. And they came because of this tree, mahogany. And now that's the national tree of Belize. They make beautiful wooden products out of the trees, look at that. All different types of wood. Alton Ha is one of the most important Mayan ruin sites and at its peak it had about 3,000 people living here and all over the place you see these mounds which are burial sites. The place was only discovered when they were building that so-called road and lots of the mounds have yet to be 
are excavated. And excavation is just continuing all the time. Trying to find what what the, the site reveals. Each of the mounds is the burial site of a ruler or a rich person. And the idea is that when you die, you have to take everything with you. And so your successors build on top of whatever it is that you own. And then their successors build on top of what it is that they owned. And so you see these levels going up with the most recent ones at the top. And what was important to each person that was buried in here was to leave a representation of themselves. So here we have a mask which has the eyes and the nose in which they found a large piece of jade and the purpose of the jade was to, to cause a baby to become cross-eyed and that was a sign of beauty but they'd also place a board on their head and have a flat forehead so that that was also a major sign of beauty. When they first found this place of course all this was covered and it's been excavated. And the excavation's only really taken place since 1976. And the amazing thing is that they let you climb all over the structures. That's uh, unlikely to continue in the future because they're all made of a sandstone and are very crumbly. And here's the view from the top of one of the tombs. Down there is a plaza and you can see it's surrounded by the various mounds. Inside the mounds they took with them jade and various other precious things to uh, show how wealthy they were. It's the incredible scale of this place that makes it so amazing because I don't know if a video shows just how high that particular mound is and it's not the highest one here. Um, it's a privilege to come to a place that's been around so long and a society that's developed and built these things is way beyond I think modern man thinks they were capable of. A fantastic place and worth the ride in the bus I say, I think. <laughs> yes it was. And now welcome to Isla Roatan, Honduras, along with another carnival ship. This is one place we've really looked forward to coming to. It's just so beautiful. And it's even got its own shipwreck out there. And this is Mahogany Beach in Roatan. Honduras and isn't this just such a lovely spot now we're at an iguana farm it's really a sanctuary they look after iguanas it's breakfast time Not often you get up close and personal with an iguana. Just watch you don't stand on that one. <laughs> She's come all the way from New Zealand to feed you. How about that? Yeah, what's more? Here we go. Two of them. Don't fight. No, yes. Yeah, be sharing, sharing be iguanas. iguanas. This one's a male, and that one's a female. Apparently, they don't mind if you pat them. I think I'll, I'll hold this at the front end and pat at the back. How's that? What does he feel like? He, doesn't, he feels like a, uh, a um, harsh, very... Hard. And he didn't yeah. want, oh, he didn't want to be padded. Scales. Yeah, he's finished his breakfast. <laughs> well done, Iggy. That's his, that's his name, Iggy. 
Hello monkey. You like looking after the iguanas, do you? No. Oh, oh hey, okay. Just Hi. just oh. you want it on the shoulder, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going to go on a tour of the mangroves in this a fantastic little village. Look at that. Pretty special little boat this. People will have been living in those uh, houses over there for hundreds of years, unchanged. Amazing. Up there is City Hall. <laughs> Pretty good for a little uh, town like this, isn't it? And it's all set in amongst the mangroves on the seashore. Just fantastic. A way of life that's so different to what we know. And yet everybody here creates a living for themselves. And probably has a pretty wonderful way of life as well. Here we have the mangroves. This isn't an experience that happens every day. But how special to be able to come to a place like this. Well, this is very, very, very special. Fantastic. Very authentic. Several hundred years ago, the Paya Indians had discovered this passage to here. This was a secret passage they discovered to here. That's all natural. Yeah. Wow. Colors are just so beautiful. Look at that. And you could probably buy a house like that for a hundred thousand dollars. This is the fishing village of Oak Ridge, and it's been here since 1742. How about that? We've been on boat trips like this all around the world and I reckon your one is the best yeah, you've ever been on. How about that? <laughs> it was fantastic. The Garifuna are the original inhabitants of this area and they've still got villages. They're descended from the Caribs who inhabited the Caribbean in the first place. Houses like this are very susceptible to hurricanes though because Obviously they're pretty flimsy and so people are building much more uh, strong structures like the concrete ones over there. And some of their roots go right back to the African days and the slaves who uh, became free and moved here. So there's Carib plus slave roots for the Garifuna people. And just look what they live on here on the side of the sea, isn't that absolutely lovely? And just a different way of life. Pretty relaxed by the beach in your simple house. Look at that. Well, Rotan is one place that I certainly would recommend that you visit. If you're going to come to the Caribbean, come on Carnival, but make sure you come to Roatan in the Honduras. And now welcome to the Cayman Islands, long the home of sailors and pirates. This is Georgetown on Grand Cayman Island. Now it's a major financial center 
where people launder their money and keep their big yachts. The Caymans were discovered by Christopher Columbus in the 1600s and were taken from the Spanish by the British in the 1700s and they're still a British country. Now we're at the Caymans premier tourist attraction, Stingray City. And what happens here is that you can get up close and personal with a stingray. Very personal. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they love it when you kiss them. The stingrays are totally in their natural environment, but they get very used to this, so they don't sting people. Here comes one here. How'd that feel? That is a pretty amazing experience, isn't it? You don't get up close and personal with stingrays very often. No. <laughs> uh, fortunately, they don't uh, bite or sting. What do they feel like? Slimy. Having a little chat with a small one. Stingray City is obviously quite a major industry for the Cayman Islands. Wonderful opportunity to have an experience like this. And this place is called Hell. And a lot of people have told me to come here over the years and they'll be pleased to know that I finally made it. But the good news that even though I did go to Hell, Ultimately, I'm not staying here. I'm going to heaven. And that's why we're going up and not down. Better to go to heaven than to hell, eh? Yeah, it's an interesting place though, this one. The rocks here in hell have been pushed up from the sea floor. They're obviously volcanic rocks. That's why they have this particular characteristic. So at least now I can say I've been to hell and back. Pirates were very much a part of the Caribbean and this is just a made up fantasy movie. They were very much a part of the, the um, Caribbean's history. And Francis Drake, who was officially not a pirate really, did go and pirate other people's ships. And um, they took over ships as did the Spanish. And um, Francis Drake, in the end, um, was died at sea and was buried in the Caribbean Sea, just turned overboard. One of the favourite dishes in the Cayman Islands is turtle, and you can even get turtle burgers. And the turtles are uh, bred here. So there's a whole lot of males and a whole lot of females, and. In time, the females lay their eggs over there. 60 days later, you've got a new turtle. These ones are green sea turtles. And you notice how they have to come up to breathe every uh, minute or so. This big one's 75 years old and it's laid over 20,000 eggs in its life. Does it make you want to have some turtle soup? Oh no, it makes you want to preserve them, that's beautiful. Come on, take a look. Got some turtle soup? Yeah. Oh, it's a good 
That one, that one's called Hurtle. Hurtle the turtle. Could be Myrtle. Oh, Myrtle. No, I think it's Hurtle. These are live eggs, and it takes them about 10 days to get right up to the surface once they hatch. It's about a metre underground. And then they can go to the sea and swim off. Cayman Islands has a totally different feel to the other places that we've been to. Tourism's big here and the finance industry means that there's a lot more money. And um, the place feels a bit like Australia really. And that's helped by being back on the left, driving on the left hand side of the road. It's been good to come here though. <laughs> Call this the fun ship. You can see why, eh? Hey? Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Good job. Here's the opposition. Oh, close. One. So close. Good try. <laughs> So let's see if he's lost his touch. <laughs> Whoa, not bad. Not bad. Still there. Nice pink ball and an orange putter. Let's see what I can do with it. One of the nicest things on this ship is the food. You can have it at all kind of levels, but you can have restaurant quality food. Look at this, beautiful shrimps. Can't be much better than that, eh? And you also get to share some nights with some very interesting people. So these are our new friends, Cindy and George. Hi. Hi, from Cindy. Hi. We're from Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. Enjoying your cruise? Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful company. Great people. That's what New Zealanders are like, eh? <laughs> now we know we've got to come there. <laughs> and you can even have lobster and shrimp. Doesn't that look good? 
And there's just so much gorgeous food. Never stops coming. Lots of it's really good for you. Very beautifully presented. And lots of it's not so good for you. Beautiful though. And gorgeous cakes everywhere. And look at this. Diet chocolate cake. So you Help don't feel option. Yeah, so you don't feel guilty. <laughs> and you can get fish and chips and oysters. Look at that. Beautiful. Non-stop ice cream. And lots of different burgers you can make. We might try the ringer. And then you put the toppings on afterwards. So McDonald's, check this out. Eat your heart out. <laughs> it's all a bit gross really, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that. Burger and fries. It's actually very nice. You don't need it, but it's very nice. And this is the antidote for all that food. You come on here and burn off some calories and we go eat some more. And getting a bit of exercise it makes you feel a lot better too. Not feel all bloated from the food. We've decided not to take the lift, so we go up and down nine flights of stairs at least five times a day. We need to though because all that food, much better to get the exercise. Okay, I'm off. And sometimes we like to just sit here by the window looking out and watching the sea. It's got this beautiful blue colour. It's lovely and relaxing. And one of the unexpected things about the Caribbean Sea is how flat it is. Day after day after day it seems you hardly ever even see a white cap. Amazing. Now we're at Half Moon K on San Salvador Island in the Bahamas. And the word K should be pronounced key. But look at this. Isn't it incredible? This place has been set up specially for um, cruise, cruise ships. What do you reckon about this? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to getting in the water actually. It looks lovely. The colour's gorgeous. Matches my hat. All of these people are just from the Carnival Glory. Incredible, eh? And the sign over there says, I wish I could stay here forever. This guy sure got it sussed. And along with a lot of the Caribbean, this place was a refuge for pirates. So we got the pirate ship. And it's all nicely set up for the tourists. With little cabanas, and the deck chairs, and the beautiful vistas.
really is amazing. The water is just crystal clear and uh, the sand is just so beautiful. But it's no good for snorkeling, there's no fish. We saw one fish only. But what a beautiful place. What a gorgeous place. Where else could you do this? Isn't this amazing? Yes, this really is gorgeous. It's an island that was bought by Holland America Line, which is um, also part of the Carnival Line. And it's used purely for tourists to come and enjoy. And it is stunning. It's beautiful. The temperature is lovely. The water is crystal clear. And it's lovely to swim or just sit. Half Moon Cay in the Bahamas. This is yet another place that you really should try and visit. And now welcome to Grand Turk in the Turk and Caicos Islands, a British overseas territory. Yet another absolutely gorgeous place. And just look at this. Gorgeous. And once again, the tourists rule in a place like this. And the weather today is perfect. There's not much on Grand Turk, so the best way to see everything is to go on the island tram tour. That's what we'll do. Grand Turk is the capital of the Turks and Caicos, and its main industry back in time was sea salt. They used to let the salt go in here from the sea and dry it all out and then export it off that jetty there. And this was all before the days of refrigeration. And they reckon that the sea salt from Grand Turk here was worth more than gold. And really it was the salt industry that made the uh, Turks and Caicos Islands. This was the first stop that Christopher Columbus made when he was going out um, on his discovery of the world. And it was also the place where John Glenn splashed down when he was, after he'd been circling the earth in uh, 1962. And so this place is sort of famous, or well, it thinks it's famous for that. All of the islands we've visited uh, have their own special character. Part of that is determined by being by the sea, and part of it is affected by hurricanes. You can see there's a fair bit of hurricane damage just here. There are donkeys and horses just running free all over this island, and all the houses have to have great big high fences around them to stop these guys coming in at night needing everything. And here we have Grand Turk's famous lighthouse, and it's famous for being so useless that nobody could see its light. And the idea was that um, you get more wrecks, and a great industry arose here of salvaging wrecks. Just recently the lighthouse has been made uh, stronger so that that doesn't happen anymore. Grand Turk was briefly held by the French and um, Horatio Nelson came here to try and retake it but failed. And it's actually just down here that Christopher Columbus first made landfall in 1492 as he was going out to seek uh, to find the new world. And if you don't want to go on a tour around the island, you can just stay here on the beach and swim in the beautiful crystal clear waters. But oh, you do miss out if, if, if all you do is um, stay by the beach. You don't get any sense of what this island is all about. So this is another one of these places that is a tourist 
mecca really. Um, its main economy used to be salt, it's now tourism and we're benefiting from that and it's all set up everywhere for the tourists. You can sit on the beach or you can swim or you can do as we did the um, tram ride around the island. Fantastic day at Grand Turk. And now welcome to San Juan, Puerto Rico, a very historic city, more or less the center of the Caribbean for pirates and for privateers, second oldest city in the Americas. In 1898, Spain sold Puerto Rico to America and this place now is an American Commonwealth and um, Puerto Ricans have American citizenship so you can see up there government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth and that's Abraham Lincoln in the 1950s the Puerto Ricans revolted and tried to assassinate uh, President Truman but nowadays they are they're called a free associated state so they have a good relationship with the United States but they're not actually a state I'll just give you a little history of San Juan it's discovered in 1493 by Christopher Columbus and colonized by the Spanish and they built this place here which is the fort of San Cristobal to protect San Juan, the major port, and the city of San Juan, old San Juan, was built over a period of 250 years, controlled by the Spanish who used slave labour to do that. A pretty uh, dark period of history because there was an awful lot of torture and um, pretty uh, miserable way of life for the, for the uh, people that they used to build this city. Before we came, we got a bit of background to this place um, by reading James Michener's book, Caribbean, and he explains in detail about San Juan in particular and the whole of this area. The Spanish came here in, 1490s, in the 1490s, and um, in the modern world, in this area was established but of course before they came they weren't the only people here the native Indian people were here and so a um, Puerto Rican is now a combination of the native Indian the Africans that came here as slaves and the Spanish and you can see just how strategic this fort is as it overlooks and protects the old city of San Juan even protects it from cruise ships like the Carnival Glory over there. The fort contains a long tunnel to protect all the people inside. And over time San Juan became the main trading port for pirates and for privateers, the sugar industry. Uh, for the whole Caribbean really. Drake tried to take it back for the English from the Spanish and failed. And the Spanish ruled here right through till 1890s when um, the Puerto Ricans rebelled so much that they sold it to the Americans. This is the El Moro Fortress built 1540. Spanish graves down there. And here we have a plaza celebrating 500 years since San Juan was discovered. San Juan means Saint John. Saint John the Baptist. And this church was built in 1523 and it's the second oldest church in the Americas. And there is Christopher Columbus who found this place. He was seeking to find the new world. And San Juan isn't just old San Juan. It's a modern city of a million people. It's got a beautiful beach and a massive uh, tourist 
interest here as well. And the main sport is baseball, but it's gradually becoming basketball. And overall, Puerto Rico has about three and a half million people. And this is just a beautiful tourist spot. People flock here in their thousands, and you can certainly see why. So when Christopher Columbus first came here, I can't imagine that he had any idea that in a few hundred years' time, this place would be as it is. It's, it's a bustling city, and yet they managed to somehow contain the three cultures of the, um, the, the native Indian and the Spanish and um, the black slate, actually, into their buildings and into their people and into their whole culture here. And now Puerto Rico, while it isn't part of America, is very American. And, uh, in fact, they can only trade with America. No other country. Christopher Columbus, he wouldn't have had any idea that when he first found this place it would turn out like this. Well, we had a lovely time in old San Juan. But it is always nice to get back home to the ship. Our final port stop is on the island of St. Martin. And this is unusual because it's part French and part Dutch. Initially it was settled by the Arawak Indians, replaced by the Caribs, and they all basically died out because of lack of water. When Christopher Columbus discovered this place in the, around 1500, the Spanish decided they didn't want to settle here. And it was settled by the Dutch and the French. And ever since, um, the two nations have sort of clashed slightly till um, about uh, 1940s, they finally made a treaty and said, well, this half is French and this half is Dutch, and now you've got St. Martin and St. Martin, um, and the two parts get on really well. This is Ocean Beach on the French side, and as you can see, this is all about the tourists. But some good snorkeling, so we're going to have a go at that. It's quite an industry here, sitting down on the beach. Within five minutes I've been offered a hat, a cap tan, a dress, some beads, some ear braiding, a foot massage and a full body massage within five minutes of sitting down. So um, obviously uh, it's a great place to tout your wares here. Well the snorkeling wasn't very good but this is yet another beautiful tropical island paradise. It's weird. Oh, what it's is it? It's a sea urchin. Oh my goodness, it's moving up there. Hold this stuff. Help. Help. Oh, that's <laughs> good though. He's a whole bit. He's moving up there. Somebody want him? And this is Marigot, the capital of the French side. And it's quite a bustling little city. And of course, everything's in French. Parlez-vous Francais. Have your lunch at Le Bistro de la Mer, the Bistro by the Sea. When they discovered salt here, St. Martin at last had an industry. And it soon became a center for trade, for silver, for salt, of course, for sugar, for spices and um, it flourished but then gradually it declined until now it's a center for tourism and also as a haven for duty free shopping so uh, the tourists come here and they spend 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 and that's what uh, makes st martin today 
Hope I'll be able to keep her out of there. It's a very good exchange rate. It's not actually correct. The euro is worth a lot more than one dollar, but it's a pulling in tool to get you in there. Très français, eh? Everything's in euro. Whereas on the Dutch side, everything's in dollars or guilders. And in 1948 is when they signed a treaty between the French and the Dutch. And ever since, same art, the French and Dutch side, you can just drive from one side to the next. Doesn't matter if you live on the French or the Dutch and you don't have no problem. And the main tourist attraction on the Dutch side is to stand at the end of the airport and see people getting blown away as the big jets come in. They give you the times when they're going to come in. And people don't seem to care too much about the danger. This is a lovely beach, but it has to be one of the most dangerous beaches in the world because the planes are just 12 feet above as they come into land. Apparently you can get a germ abrasion from the sand. That gets thrown up by the planes, you mean? They're getting bored while they're waiting. See how low it is. Right up above our heads. These are the brave ones. And this is Philipsburg on the Dutch side, the capital of the Dutch side. Pretty nice place, isn't it? The lovely beach over there. Everything set up for the tourist. St. Martin is obviously prospering these days. And back to Doc Martens, which is where the cruise ships dock on St. Martin. And then it's back to the Carnival Glory for the very last time. I must say the offshore excursions to visit the various Caribbean islands have been just fantastic. Really worth visiting. Carnival Glory's got 3,000 passengers but this one it's got 6,000, twice as many as ours. I reckon everything gets a bit crowded, so I think we did pretty well on our one, the Carnival Glory. This gives you an idea of just how big this ship is. Someone fell down there. And there's nice music happening all the time. And they love following you around and taking photographs where you can get portraits done. And um, we're very pleased with our one and we, we bought a photo to celebrate our trip here. Fantastic! And you can shop till you drop diamonds and bags and anything you can think of. There's no doubt about it, 
life on the carnival glory sure is glorious you really there's so much you can do but you can also relax and just let the ship take you to where you're going to go it's a, a cruising really is a great way of life so what country are you from Indonesia Dream Akasi. Sama -sama. <laughs> <laughs> this is sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, has been, sorry has been every day looking after us so well. Uh, and she needs a big pay rise and a big promotion. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Dream Akasi. Sama -sama. Thank you for being so kind. <laughs> well, it's been a fantastic two weeks. Really enjoyed the Caribbean, both east and west. Very pleased to have read the history of this place because it could so easily just become a tourist mecca where the same things are happening in the same places, people wanting to sell you diamonds and things, when there's a whole lot more diamonds and pearls of, and gems out there um, of the history of places and the people. And so we got to see some of that and some of the beautiful scenery. And my favorite places, I guess, I really enjoyed Roatan, which was fantastic and the mangrove ride there with our Astavarian friend and the, um, the Mayan ruins, both sets of Mayan ruins but especially the bigger one and um, on the east side I think um, Half Moon K was a surprise at how beautiful it was to just relax and have a day sitting on the sand and swimming so we've been well looked after, the staff have been fantastic a very, very, very good holiday. Well, this brings our two weeks on the Carnival Glory to a close. We've now been on uh, quite a few of these cruises, and it's a very, very nice way of life. I think that the uh, Carnival Glory has been right up there with all the other cruises. Really, really enjoyed visiting the islands of the Caribbean and um, exploring their history and um, especially seeing the beauty, the colours, the, the, the island way of life. It's just been just so lovely. And I think um, coming here for this two weeks has been a very fitting way of celebrating our 40th wedding anniversary. We sure have had a wonderful time and this cruising is certainly a great way of life when you get to our age. So, thank you Carnival Glory, thank you Caribbean. We've been so glad we came. And then, back to Miami. After what has proven to be a truly wonderful cruise.